All right, welcome back everyone to another SketchUp Basics course by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. So up to this far, you should have, should have been able to do the corner block, the reference block, and then the rim, and been introduced to solid tools and some basic rendering. So today we're going to make a screwdriver and then use Twilight to do some more rendering. Now Twilight is a free um, rendering platform that can be used within SketchUp and it is free, the hobbyist version is free, but there is a paid version for the Pro which is $99. Don't quote me on that. The last time I checked it was $99. But I highly recommend it if you're doing this as a career and you need some photorealistic. There's two options. You can use Twilight for $100 or there's an open source version that Twilight's built off of called Kirkethia which is free and open source and it does very well and it's its own standing platform so you can actually use SketchUp as Kirkethia is doing some rendering though it might be hard to do because it is CPU intensive anyways so let's continue on let's see what's in this lesson today so in this lesson we're going to talk about revolutions again we've already done some with the rim using the follow me tool this time we're going to use the same technique where we're going to make a sketch revolve it and then use cutting tools to make our screwdriver talk about tangent arcs possibly we did touch on this with the rim and the screwdriver I'm trying to remember if we deal with that if we do you'll see it but you've already you're already familiar with this with the last course with the um, with the rim talk about solid tools again and then materials and mass properties I don't know if I've shown this but I will be opening up an Excel file that shows how you can find the mass of your object and then of course rendering so let's look at our drawing this is the screwdriver this did come from my mechanical engineering courseware book uh, I used a parametric modeling software for this and this is just the drawing so if we look closely this is 0 0.025 this is in inches so right there there's a diameter of 0.2 inches so almost a quarter inch um, shank and then it's cut at seven degrees off of its horizontal center line. So, let's see what other information that we have. Okay, so here's our basic sketch. Notice we don't sketch the angled pieces because when it rotates it looks funky. So we just do this and then we cut it at the end. So we're going to be making this. Now bear in mind these dimensions are used for parametric modeling. So we're going to have to figure out some of these on our own which could take a little bit of time but have a calculator nearby and then here is some references of where we need to put some cutting planes to cut some sections out here's this diagram right here um, okay here's where the cutting planes will be I do have some dimensions here for SketchUp users and other users because for some reason parametric modeling drawings doesn't include everything because they think everyone uses parametric modeling which they don't so okay alright perfect so go ahead and open up SketchUp I'm going to be using um, well I guess interior and production design in millimeters I like it because it's a plain white background but I think today I want to be out in the sunshine so let's use this one okay alright so go ahead and ignore that let's go ahead and get rid of Chris so we don't need him let me check one thing real quick did this finish processing it did Okay. So, let's look at our drawing again. We need this one. 
So it's five and a half inches in length from stem to stern, if you want to call it that. It is 0.1 inches here and then revolve giving us the diameter of 0.2. So let's go ahead and just start, let's just make a rectangle that's five and a half by 0.325 high and then just start. No, I don't like that idea. Let's just make this basic profile. We don't need to make it complicated. So let's go to the front view, L for line. And bear in mind, I should be, let's check this, model info should be in meters. I'm going to use precision up to four decimal points. Now the reason why I'm doing it in meters is because I pretend it's in inches and then I scale down because sometimes when you cut with smaller objects it doesn't like it and so we'd have to scale it up bigger anyway. So I'm just going to make it large and then scale down. So I'm going to do this 5.500 Control Shift E to zoom extent so we can see it and then we went up I want to say it was 0.325 it is, whoops, went too far. 0.325. And then we need to go over 2.25. Okay, and then we'll we'll stop right there. And we don't need to know how high this is because we'll go up from here, over, and then connect them. So 0.1, and then we need to go 2.25, two and a two and a quarter. So make sure it's on the red axis. If you want to force it there, hit the right arrow and type in 2.250. Okay, hit L for line. We're going up to here. Go along the blue and we want a 0.100. Okay, and then all the way over until it infers. I, I usually go to the end point and then I drop it straight down. Okay. So we have a basic profile. Now it's going to get a little bit more complicated when we start looking into this business right here and this business. So let's first do this fillet. Uh, it's a radius of 0.25. So that one's not too bad. So there's multiple ways we can do this. We could try with the the arc tool. I'm going to do 48 sides. Wait, I don't want arc. I want two point arc. Um, 48 sides again just to get it to. The only problem is if we start, let's say we start way back here and we go like this. So there's where it's tangent, but I mean, we don't know what that radius is. I mean, we could start way over here, you know. So, best thing to do is move this over by 0.25, then drop this one down, 0.25. Two ways we can do this, we can get the arc tool, click where it's X, and click where it's X right there, whoops. And then when it goes magenta, that means it's tangent, and that's what you want. Click again. The other way is use the circle and do that and then trim but since we have used the arc tool let's get that going okay you know what I'm just gonna save it real quick documents Okay, before the revolve, how about before the revolution, let's keep with our theme, we like revolutions, do we not? Okay, so we have that, now the cool thing is we have this reference of 1.850 from this end to here where we need to put this radius of 3. So I'm at least going to get that point in there. So tape measure, we're going to grab this one, and I already forgot it, 1.850? Yes. 
So 1.850, enter. So we know along this point, there's going to be a radius of 0.3. Now we don't know, actually we do know exactly where that's at. It's at 0 0.450 off of the bottom. 0 0.450. Okay, so this one's not too bad. Circle 48 sides has a radius of 0 0.300. 0 0.300. Okay. Let's just start trimming some stuff out. Look at that. Okay. Now the tricky part are these little little radiuses right here. Um, let's let's go up just a little bit. Whoops. So we've got one, two, three radii. That's Point zero five zero. So let's go ahead and get those in there. Okay. Doesn't look like it's going to be as complicated as we think it should be. So at least for this one, I'll move this over point zero five zero. Okay. That's not too bad. Drop this down point zero five zero circle with 48 sides or we can even use the arc tool oh look at that even trimmed it wow all I did let's do that again so I'll click on the X bring it down here click once click twice automatically does the fillet that was actually quite handy so now this next one there's a line that goes straight up right through here and it's 0.5 off of that tangent to the circle. So um, because I can that's not where that was. Let's just draw a circle right here again. And we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to take this and we're going to make a tangent right there. Okay. Now we can delete that. And we can actually start with a radii right there of 0 0.50. This one I'm going to actually use this. I want to go over 0 0.050. Not sure if that's what I wanted. Okay, notice how we're going to have, let's just do that. So this part is definitely radius of 0.5. Now I want to make sure before we accept that, that this is what we want to do. Okay, 0.5 for that. It does look like it's just a portion of it and that they are tangent to each other. So we're very close. Okay. All right, let's figure this out here. So I just got to figure out if this line was tangent to the circle or if this point is 0.5 away from it's hard to explain what I'm trying to what I'm trying to see here or if it's 0.5 from this point right here so so now I did point zero five zero from there. Actually, I want that line. No, I don't. 
tape measure. Let's get that right there. Okay. So now an arc. Yep, that's not going to do what we want to do. All right, so I was right the first time. Control Y. All right, it's just zoomed in and how these are not perfect circles, they're just line segments, we get overlap. So, which is fine, it's not that big of crap. No, I lost my tangency. Let's do that again. Wasn't paying attention. Click, don't move, then click again. And see if you zoom out, it's not that bad. It's not too bad. Let's trim that. Let's trim that out. Okay, let's see how it compares. Okay. And then we just have that last one. I'm not sure if I like that. Well, for right now, for all intents and purposes, it does great. So, let's bring this there, and then 0 .050, zero. circle. We run into the same problem, that's because I didn't measure that part right. So we need this portion to be a radius of 0 0.50. There's a lot of different ways we could do this. <sighs> I guess we can do it with the circle again. So draw your circle. Take your tape measure, drag this one, make it right there, get rid of said circle, then use the arc tool, click it, and then I'm just going to type, whoops, capital R. 0 0.050 and hit enter just to see what happens. Oh, yeah, it was exactly where it was blue. So, just for kicks and giggles. X to there. Erase that. Erase that. Okay, I think we have everything. So let's go ahead. Erase these. Okay. I'm going to save it. Now the next part. Let's do a little bit of a revolve. So, um, take your tape measure, make a guide on the blue line. That way we can get a circle along the red axis and just make a circle just like that. Okay, click that. I have a feeling I might get some messed up geometry. Nope, it worked. And it even got rid of our circle path for us. So now that is done right at the origin. Let's take a look at our beautiful screwdriver. Okay. Everything is fantastic. Last thing that we need to do to make it a solid is right there. Make sure you hit the right arrow key to get it to the red. Go straight up, connect it, spacebar. Let's make a component. I'm going to call it main body. Okay, 
last thing to do always check it, it says it's not a component it's not solid so it means there's an external face in there so I can't see it so I'm gonna hit x-ray and somewhere inside don't know where says there's an error so I'm just gonna hit fix and then it says no errors everything's shiny and it says solid component so let's go ahead and turn off x-ray make sure it's still in great shape and it is okay so in fact this is a great spot to end part one and then when we come back we will make the cutting tools and part two will be to cut it and then part three will be rendering so thank you for watching and we will see you on the flip-flop.